So we're on, we are on top dead center and check it out. I could totally move, I can move the rockers back and forth. This one's a little bit more loose. Um, but having said that, there's two different theories on how to set lash. One is, which I honestly believe is the correct way, is you try and pull on the, you pull on the rod up and down to see if you get any play this way. And once you're at the point with no play, that's your setting and you do one half turn on the on the poly nut. So while while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and take all the poly nuts off. And as I mentioned before, there's a tool for that. So so this tool actually goes right on the poly nut. This tool sets the lock nut, but we don't need this tool yet. We just need to break these loose, and they can be stubborn. <clears throat> Jeez. <clears throat> okay, so these are loose. I'm going to make sure the lock nuts are actually backed out, because I don't want any accidental preload. So I'm backing out those set screws, those big set screws. So now the rockers are nice and loose. The push rods are loose. I can move them up and down. Now the other theory that I've seen done, and I think I did it the first time I built the motor before I dynoed it, is to tighten these poly nuts to tighten these poly nuts until you cannot twist or turn or at the start of the push rod turning so I'm going to try that this time just to see what the behavior is at the very end when I crank the motor so I'm I'm turning this lock nut while I'm twisting this rod and I'm Tightening until there's an increase in drag. I don't have to do it until there's no um, so I can do it I can do it pretty aggressively and then I can't twist it. I'm actually gonna go to the point of where it's just starting starting to tighten up. Which is right there. So I'm right where I want to be on the exhaust valve. See how the play in here? I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. So I have roughly, I mean, this is, this is my finger torque gauge that, you know, I'm at. I feel is the same. It's not super loose, not super tight. So now we're there. We take our handy dandy wrench and we tighten it one half turn. So if I'm already pointed up, I'm going to go one half. Same thing here, half a turn to there. And there's no more, no more movement. Remember before I could rattle, I was rattling them like this one. I can rattle. So with that there, we take our set screw and we tighten it down as hard as we can. And then for good measure, I'm going to go just a little bit added lockdown. So, number one is done. We're now on our valve adjustment path. There is a faster way to do it than just to rotate the engine on every cylinder to figure out 
when your valves are closed. So I am going to post something in the link below. This is from Pontiac Performance. It's actually instructions on how to do the, the cheater way. Okay, so the, the way that works is once we're at top dead center number one, we can actually do several intake and exhaust valves at the same time. So that's what we're going to do. So again, I'll put that link below. Now, as, as a helper, obviously I'm not doing this from memory, I'm using this myself. I made a couple templates, and I've used these before. And what I do is I put this cardboard template above uh, the heads, so I can see which which one's intake, which one's exhaust. Okay, so cylinder one, three, five, seven. The other one's two, four, six, eight. Right. And since we already did number one, I mark off. I did exhaust valve and I did the intake valve. And I used a piece of green painter's tape because when I'm done, I can just take the tape off and then keep these around to, to reuse again. So I'm going to go ahead and put them on the motor and, and we'll continue our process. Okay, so I'm putting these. I actually had a, a uniform change, but I'll show you that in a second. This is my template. So as you can tell, one, three, five, seven, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake. And the way you, you actually determine that is here's the exhaust manifold. Those are the two exhaust valves, right? The exit exhaust manifold. That's how you tell what the exhaust is. And it's the same thing on the intake manifold. That's how you know which valve is associated. So, um, we're going to do the other side. I'll put my template down. And we'll get our cheat sheet. So the cheat the cheat sheet says we do intake on one, two, five, and seven. So five and seven intake. That's right here. Five. Five and seven. Okay, five and seven intake. Check. Check. So according to our chart, I just did all of the odd, the odd side. So intake on one, five, and seven, exhaust on one and three, did my little check boxes, and now I'm going to do uh, the even side. So intake on number two, which is right here, exhaust on four and eight. Okay, so we did intake one, two, five, and seven, and exhaust on one, three, four, and eight. I did my check check marks on my templates, and now to get the rest of the valves, we actually rotate the end the crank three hundred and sixty degrees. So that's two strokes, and then we can do the rest of the valves. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to use the same method, same timing mark. It's going to do 360 degrees. All right, we're getting 
getting closer. There. Almost. There well, goes all my tools. There we go. So that's top dead center on number six. So we're at top dead center on number six, which means we now do intake on three, four, six, and eight, and exhaust on two, five, six, and seven. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the even side this time. All right, so two. Number two, exhaust. Let's crack it loose. Loosen up our lock nut. Rotate our push rod until it gets tight. Right there, do our 100, 180 degree lockdown. Tighten the set screw. And then for good measure, one little extra turn. But a bang. The other beauty of doing it this way is that since I don't have check marks here, I know that's those are the ones I have to do. There are no there's no more rotating the engine. So I don't have to look at the cheat sheet anymore. I can just zip right along and do all of these in a row. All right, even sides done. Two, four, six, eight, check marks all around. Looks awesome. So, just checking number six again. That's the top dead center. Feels great. Now, I'll finish off the other side. Okay, on the uh, odd side, I'm gonna go ahead and take apart the our suspect rocker. I'm just looking for obvious damage because I don't know how it backed off. It might have just slipped off. I don't know. I'm going to run the, run the lock nut up, look at them, up and down a couple times. Oh, there's a rough spot here. I can't tell if that's the... It's because the lock nut got in the way. Yeah, it makes sense. Lock nut. Push rod feels good. So. Rocker looks good. Nice and smooth. So, let's put it back on. And there's, those of you that don't know, there's a, there's a flat on one side of the center pin. The flat is obviously where the lock nut engages like that. So let's make sure that's pointed up. There we go. That was number three, intake.
done. Two more. Okay, so I told you I had a costume change, right? So this is a, a TV show I'm going to be on. It's called Wrench Wars. It's on a Mav TV. Uh, today is the day after Thanksgiving, 2019. The episode airs on December 9th, 2019. So if you're watching this video after December 9th, 2019, then you should be able to catch all the Wrench Wars episodes on YouTube. I know season one and season two are on there, so season three is, is inevitable. So if you can't check it out, I had a great time filming. And uh, anyway, not to be too distracted. Here's our, our template that we filled out. Great quality control here, right? So we have check box checks on all the valves. All the valves. And like I said, I love green painter's tape because it's easy to take off for the, for the next time, right? So all set and what I'm going to do now is while I have the valve covers off I'm just going to clean them they're super dirty uh, the exterior as far as dust goes it's probably on that last cruise we did the parking lot was uh, just a dust monster and every time I pulled off into the dirt with my emergency situations that wasn't good either uh, so I'm going to clean those up put them back on the car and we'll fire it up see how it sounds be right back Okay, we're done. One final thing though. Don't forget your wrench that you put on your crank. Ah, tell me how I know about that one. I actually accidentally left it on one time and cranked the motor. Wrench went flying. Thank God no damage was occurred, but learn by your mistakes. All right, so we're back in the car. We're gonna do a little test fire. Made sure all my tools were out of the engine compartment. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys a trick I do uh, to fill the carb. So those of you that have a carbureted car know that if it sits too long, the fuel drains out of the carb and or evaporates. So I put electric fuel pump in. So when I go, and you can hear it pumping right now. I can turn off the pump with a little switch. So in theory, I give it a couple pumps and it should fire. Hey, so crisis averted. That was awesome. I'm so relieved that we fixed that. <sighs> Stressful as it was. But hey, I hope everyone learned something. Uh, again, check out Wrench Wars on December 9th. And if you missed December 9th already, just uh, Google it on uh, YouTube. And, uh, you know, check it out. I had a fun time filming that show. So, subscribe. Tell your friends. And until next time, build them fast, but drive them faster.